fast approaching three years of age, the 8th generation Volkswagen Passat is branching out. The car is now available in the UK with a choice of four petrol engines as well as four diesels, remedying a situation that meant the only petrol-powered current Passat that we Brits could buy, until quite recently at least, was the top-of-the-range GTE plug-in hybrid. In light of what's currently happening to the interest in diesel-engined new cars of so many shapes and sizes across Europe, this may be considered less of a sensible, prudent move and more of a blatantly essential one, you would think, for a car maker hoping to maintain the reach of one of its biggest selling models. The current Passat was introduced to UK showrooms late in 2014 with an almost entirely diesel engine range, nearly a year before Dieselgate hit the headlines. Had the scandal in question not been so squarely centered on the Volkswagen brand, you might have had a bit of sympathy for the UK distributor in stacking all of its ships behind diesel only to watch the croupier change the rules of the game shortly after their bet. Three years ago, after all, the expectation that a mid-sized saloon might sell to UK consumers mostly with diesel engines would have been entirely reasonable. The Passat's 1.4-liter turbocharged engine develops 148 bhp, which leaves it at a slight disadvantage on power relative to some like for light downsized petrol rivals, and 184 pounds foot of torque, which is more competitive. Although VW's identically powerful 2.0-liter diesel Passat is nearly 40% more torquey on paper, it's also slightly slower accelerating. 8.4 seconds versus 8.7 seconds for 0 to 62 miles per hour, dash and not to mention nearly 2,000 pounds more expensive and 2% more punitive on benefit in kind tax, for as long as the current regulations survive. Ignoring whichever way the breeze of public opinion is blowing, then, there are good objective reasons to prefer a pass at petrol to a diesel before you've even got near the driver's seat. And once you're installed, the Passat 1.4 TSI isn't backwards and coming forwards with plenty more reasons. This is a smart, spacious, comfortable and very well-finished modern saloon whose cabin excels with its apparent material integrity and technological sophistication. Furthermore, a relatively refined and free revving, yet still flexible, turbocharged petrol engine suits it even better than a diesel would. The Passat's driving position isn't desperately sporty feeling but it seats you low enough to feel like your hips are fairly close to the roll axis of the car while also giving you a good view out. The fascia design is clean lined and simple, with its complementary senses of material class and attention to detail percolating slowly through the fit, finish and feel of its moldings, switches, fittings and controls, and through the intuitive placement and easy usability of its secondary systems. You wouldn't call the overall effect dazzling, but it's certainly impressive in a slow-burning, everyday-use sort of a way. Buy the car in GT specification and you get plenty of technological sophistication as standard. The car's flat-screen digital instruments are presented very clearly on a 12.3-in screen that VW calls Active Info Display and, once you're familiar with its various settings and menus, they can be made to display just the information you want in just the way that suits you. Alongside that you get VW's 8.0 and Discover Navigation Infotainment Setup, which, although a step down from the top of the range Discover Pro system, would actually be our system of choice in the car. That's partly because, unlike its sibling system, the standard setup retains physical knobs for adjusting volume and map zoom and also partly because VW's headline gesture control system on the optional 9.2 and setup is gimmicky anyway. VW's 1.4 liter engine is particularly quiet at idle and at a gentle cruise, and although it operates with a little bit of latency at low crank speeds, it compensates with very useful torque between 2000 revolutions per minute and 4000 revolutions per minute. The upper limit of its useful range is about 5,000 revolutions per minute, beyond which point it will spin, although a bit unwillingly. During typical road use, though, it seems a very well-mannered and flexible engine with a decent enough turn of pace for assured overtaking and plenty of stout and gear muscle to make for easy motorway work. Real-world cruising economy can easily be made to hit the high 40s to the gallon on a decent trip, 
although it does nosedive more quickly than a diesel might in more demanding use.